Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday School at Cedar Lane. We're glad to have everybody here. And uh, it's good to be in person where we can see you. <laughs> We've got a very good lesson today. It's an, uh, something that we have heard, you know, in our studies of the Bible about the ten lepers, you know, that were uh, healed by Jesus. And but, you know, as I was looking and studying this lesson, I found out some things about leprosy that I didn't know. And we'll cover that as we go through the lesson. But our topic today is attitude, which is our feeling or the way that we act, of gratitude. And that is being thankful. And I think sometimes we, uh, as me, we fail to be thankful for everything that Jesus has done for us. Just like this lepers here. And we're gonna, it, is, it is so good that we can find out a little bit more about these uh, lepers. And uh, the, we're going to, our top, our Bible study is from Leviticus 13, 45 through 46. It, now here's the way it goes. Anyone with, with such a deviling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkept, cover the lower part of their face, and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have to the disease, they must remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. So here tells you how the lepers were treated back in the Old Testament, and it still carried over into the New Testament. And this is Luke 17, 11 through 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Who are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. You know, there's a lot that I could say about that. And maybe when we get on into the lesson, that's the last verse. But uh, let's look at the uh, verses individually. Where they were talking when anyone with a deviling disease must wear torn clothes. And because, you know, they had leprosy, they had to live outside the camp. And the only, the only way they could survive is with their family taking care of them. Nobody would go around them because, and you know what this sort of remind me of? It sort of remind me of this COVID that we've had. When I was studying, I thought, you know, this is sort of like what we had when we had the COVID. You know, look how they were isolated and the only people that could help them was the, the ones that knew what to do. And then no family or anybody could go around them. And then when they came home, they had to be isolated for so many weeks. And you know, that sort of remind me of these lepers, how they must have felt. Because didn't we feel sort of isolated when we had to stay home for the two weeks and we couldn't go out? We felt sort of isolated. And this was a terrible disease. And you know, I didn't realize this, but uh, it we had, uh, let me pronounce it right, leprosariums. Now this is sort of like a sanitarium where the lepers go. In 1936, here, uh, this little girl was taken, she was 13 years old and she was diagnosed with leprosy. And she had to be isolated from the other children and she had to go to a place where there was lepers. And then, uh, I read this. There was one in the United States. It was located in Louisiana from 1894 to 1999. Now, you know, we have come scientists and 
they had came up with things to treat this. Now it's called it's a called a disease. Now it's not called leprosy. It's called Hansen's disease. And when you have that, you've got to be quarantined, and you know until uh, they get it under control. And so let's go on. And can you imagine? I thought, oh my goodness, Glenn knows, and I guess the other people know how you are. I can't stand for my hair to be unkept, you know. And these people had to go. I don't know what the point was that their hair had to be unkept. And I can imagine how I would have felt if I couldn't have done my hair. <laughs> okay. And it says, of course, as long as they had the disease, they remained unclean and they must live alone. They must live outside the camp. Wouldn't it be terrible to have? And you know, I thought this too as I was studying this lesson about leprosy and how it could relate to us. Now, you know, until we come to know the Lord, I, you know, we are sort of isolated. We have got, we don't have a disease, but we don't have him in our hearts, you know. So we are really outside of other people because, you know, the ones that know the Lord and then here's us. Of course, we don't have to go to no camp or anything like that. But once we have accepted him, then he has cleansed us and made us whole. That's what I was thinking when I was studying this. And uh, okay, now listen, if this is a good point. Now on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Now the Jews would not go through Samaria, you know, because they were they didn't they didn't get along with the Samaritans because the Samaritans were of a mixed race, and so. They would take the long way around, and it told, you know, how long, how long that was. Well, Jesus didn't pay attention to that. He didn't care. He went right through Samaria, and uh, they were going to Jerusalem. So, and he said, as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy him, and they stood at a distance, so they knew, not, knew to stand back, you know, away from or nobody, and you know, that is just so much like this COVID. I just couldn't get that out of my mind, how we wore our mask, we didn't touch, we sit six feet apart, and you know, it, it just sort of reminded me of that. And, but this leprosy was really a bad disease. Sometimes you would lose limbs, you know, and you, has anybody in here ever had psoriasis? I had that in my younger days. And I would say to myself, this looks like a form of leprosy, you know, because it was white and scaly. Mine finally, I guess with age, got better, but it could be treated. So, okay, and here's what they said. They knew who he was right away. Listen to this. And he called out in a loud voice, G or, the, or they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. So they want, were wanting compassion from Jesus. Do you notice the right away they knew who he was? They called, they'd heard of him. They called him Master. And Jesus, have have mercy on us. Now, don't that what is that not what we do when we ask the Lord into our heart? We ask him to have mercy on us. Save us, dear Lord, from you know, just just save us. That's what now I that's what I have always called it, being saved. Okay. And that's what these were wanting. When, they, when he saw them, listen to what he said. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. Now, a leper had to, if, when they were, you know, healed or cleansed from leprosy, then they had to go to the priest, and the priest had to say that they were okay. Same with COVID in our doctors, right? You know, you're okay. You can go home. You know, it's it, you're better. And... Um, so, and listen, I, I thought this was so good. As they went, they were cleansed. So, you know what they did? I can imagine this. They all took off towards the priest, you know. And I can imagine uh, if I had that disease and he said, go show yourself to the priest, I would be running you know, as fast as I could to get there. And that's what they were doing. Um, and they got were cleansed. They they were cleansed as they were running, according to this. It says, and as they went, they were cleansed. And so, 
I, I just like to, you know, wouldn't you like to have lived back in those days and seen these miracles that Jesus performed and how these people acted? That that would have to be something wonderful right there. And But listen to this. One of them, when he saw he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. So he didn't, he, after he seen he was cleansed, he didn't go on to the priest. He came back to the one that had cleansed him. That's just wonderful. And guess what he was? A foreigner. So that reminds me, it says he and he was a Samaritan. And I think, have you all ever noticed sometimes if you are friends with a foreigner that has come from a, a land that where they're mistreated and all they come over here where there's freedom, how thankful they are. So this guy here was a foreigner. And I thought of that guy that uh, has the restaurant. I don't know what his name is. Richard said he has eaten there before. He's a foreigner. And during this COVID or any time, he helps the, the, the uh, people. I guess they, he must be at town close to where homeless and things like people like that are. He helps them. He helps the community. And he will tell you he's so thankful to be here in America in the land of the free, you know? So that's what this guy, he was a foreigner and he was so thankful that Jesus had said, well, cleansed him. So let's see what Jesus said next. And he said, where are all the 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Now, first we talked about attitude, and now we're talking about the uh, gratitude that was on our uh, topic of our lesson. And the other 10, they didn't come back. They were so happy to be cleansed of the uh, leprosy that they didn't come back and uh, thank Jesus. Now, we wonder how this, can, this lesson can fit into us, how we can have gratitude. Let me tell you something that happened to me. We went to, you. your gratitude is how you show your love for others from Jesus, because we know him. Well, I, we were, Glenn and me, we didn't much go out because of the COVID, but we decided the other day that we would go to parties. So Glenn was getting the food, and I said, well, I'll get us a table. So I go back there, and this man, about my age, he, hi, how are you? And I said, oh, no, don't tell me that. You know, first thing you think is that. I said, somebody got a hit on me. <laughs> so, and I said on the booth behind him, well, it had a handicap thing. I said, well, I better move on back. Well, I was sitting back there and he said, are you a Christian? And I said, yes, I have been one since I'm nine years old. I said, are you? He said, yes. Where do you go to church? And I told him, you know, where I went to church. And he said, well, I'm looking for a church and I'm thinking about going to Wallace Memorial, you know, and said, I'm thinking about going there. And I said, well, now we're not very far from Wallace Memorial. I said, you would love our church. And I think then that Richard can close his ears, but I've been telling how, <laughs> how what a wonderful pastor we had. And I said, we would love to have you. And I said, we have got a very good church, but I said, now Wallace Memorial does a lot of good work for the Lord. So if you go there, you know, and by this time, Lynn was back with food. And I, you know what I thought? Wasn't he brave to yell across there and ask me if I was a Christian? I thought, would I ever do that? Probably not. I mean, I have asked people, but not loud like that. And, and there was people in between us that had taken that seat, and he was, was going like this. You know, I was talking, <laughs> talking around him. But anyway, that is gratitude. That's the gratitude that we should have, you know, because we know the Lord, because we've got a church, that a working church, you know, and that is because of us. The church is just, that's a, us. This is just a building. We are the church. But we have a church that works for the Lord and shows our gratitude. Have you ever noticed when somebody comes in off the street that's, you know, that's maybe... I don't want to say this, maybe not as nicely as dressed as us, or, you know, they just, they just come in. And most of the time, those people are wanting help. 
And I know our church does this, and I am so thankful that when we we leave, we show our gratitude by going back there and shaking his hand, or their hand, most of the time, I, it's been a man, shaking their hand, tell them we're glad to have them, and ask them, them to come back and visit us. So that's what we need to do. That's the way that we show our gratitude. Well, that's the end of my lesson. I hope you all, and no, here's Lenny, there's one more verse. He says, rise and go, your faith has made you well. You know, Jesus don't demand that we thank him, but he likes for us to thank him for what he has done for us. And you know, it, uh, it's just, we should thank him every day, morning and night. Sometimes I do, but you know what? I'll just be honest with you. Sometimes I get I get up, you know, and I don't say, thank you, Lord, for letting me see another day. But a lot of times I do. So anyway, that's my lesson, and I hope you all have enjoyed it. And Danny? <laughs>